Whew. What's up, everybody? It's Jason from Straight Edge Knives, man. And here we're going to do the use video on the TKL Striker. Let me pop this bad boy out right here. Check this bad boy out. You didn't see my unboxing and initial uh, um, thoughts on the knife video. Go check that out. Uh, but we'll be going over the blade in more detail here in a little bit. But we're going to start this off, man. Right here, we have a whole chicken. Okay, guys, this has got the bones, the breastbone, the back, spine, thighs, legs, it's everything. It's a whole chicken, okay? And before anybody starts complaining, hey, you're wasting, this isn't going to go to waste. As soon as I'm done doing my cutting and chopping on stuff on this thing, it's going to get boiled up. We're going to shred all the chicken. It's going to go to make a healthy dog food for our dogs, okay? So it's not going to waste. So, you know, plus this thing was a reduced price. It was about to expire, so it's all good, right? So anyway, uh, we're going to start this video off with a bang, okay? Before we get into the batoning and uh, cutting, rope cutting and all that stuff, we're going to show you what this blade is capable of doing, at least on some um, meteor type of substances, as you will. Uh, we're going to do a little stabbing. I'm going to do a little slicing, and I'm going to try to get a... Uh, you, might, you might see me having to change my gloves out a little bit. I'm going to wear gloves, but after I get some slices in here and some stuff, we're going to try to bring the camera in, show you guys a little bit of up close of kind of what this blade can do you know as far as uh that type of work that you that might have to be done you might be cooking in a big kitchen and you need to slice and dice up a chicken to feed a bunch of people you know you know what i'm saying so anyway let's get into it <sighs> yeah right there man that thing just okay <laughs> so right there that big gaping hole is just where i stabbed this chicken in <laughs> let's do this again just slicing that hole bigger. Let's get. Let's try to get right up in here. Right here, you can see that hole that I just opened up right there. This chicken's kind of heavy. Let me uh, adjust my pole here that I got. There we go. Oh my goodness! Hopefully, I got that. Look at that. I think I was in the way for that. So I'm going to stand right here. We're going to do like a kind of a backhand slash. You want to try to go across this way. I can get my chicken to stay where I want it. Look at that. Right in there. Let's go to the thigh. Guys, look at that. Look at that thigh. Actually, let's see if we can get all the way in here. I actually got down to the butt. Look at that. Guys, okay. Here's a glove switch part because I want you to see what I did to the joint on this bone here real quick. Okay. So stand by. Let me pop this glove off real quick. I'm trying to be as clean about this as possible, but it's, uh, it's not exactly the easiest thing to do. So let me adjust my hat here. We're going to come in here nice and tight. Actually, I'm going to flip my camera angle around so I can see what I'm doing. You guys see that? See that cut on the bone? Look how clean that cut in that joint is right there. Look at that. See what I'm talking about right there? Holy Toledo. Look at these slices right here. Straight through the breast. I mean... That's just wicked. My goodness. Okay, I'm going to flip this camera back around. You guys, I'm kind of working by myself here, so we're, we're not done, okay, by any means. Let me grab another glove. Trying to, trying to be as clean as I can about, so I don't have to wash my hand 50 million times, but guys, this thing is so wicked. I mean, look at this. Let's get this. Oh, look at that. Cut it. There's the bone right there. Again, let me see if I can. Look at Got through. God, I cannot believe how crazy that is right there. I mean, chunk of bone right there. It literally almost. I'm going to cut this open right here so I can get a better look at it. 
I mean, it almost cut through that bone. It's ridiculous. I mean, look how easily this cuts through this chicken. I mean, it, that bone's got a clean cut through it. I mean, that's crazy. My dogs are going to like that when I barbecue that up. Let's, uh, let's come. I'm going to try not to hit my metal clip here. I'm going to come across the top of this big meaty portion right here. Oh, look at that. I mean, geez, Louise, it just slices through that like nothing. We're going to cut a wing off. That cut through the bone right there, too. Um, slice this off, and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. Look at this right here. Clean cut right through this bone area. I mean, that's not a thick bone, but still, that's pretty impressive. I mean, swing this bad boy around right here. Yeah, I just knocked my chicken down, guys. Ugh. Pick this bad boy back up. Trying to put this metal hook where I'm not going to hit it with my blade either. So, I mean, look. I mean, geez, Louise. I mean, that's just flaying this thing open like nothing. That's just... Oh, man, this is just such a wicked blade, guys. Look at Look at that. Let's take this other leg off. Again. Okay. That cut right there. Let's cut this right here. Oh, my gosh. I would not want to be... On the receiving end of this at all because I got so not only it cleanly sliced but look at look how clean this cut is through that bone right there I mean it cut through the bone here granted are they like the, the most thick bones in the world no but still that was pretty impressive Guys, this thing is just a little, look, look at how quickly that slices off chunks of that chicken, guys. That's crazy, man. That is crazy and impressive. So, I can keep cutting on this. Oh, hell, let's keep cutting on it, right? That's what, that's what you guys want to see, right? You want to see some crazy stuff? Right back here is the spine, so... Try to get this to hold still. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna come on the backhand slash on this on the spine area. Okay. Oh, spine, ribs, everything cut cleanly through it, guys. That's just, dude. This striker is wicked, man. Woo! All right. I'm gonna get this all cleaned up, and we're gonna come back and do. The uh, knife cutting, all that other stuff. But, guys, what a way to start this video. I mean, it just decimated this whole chicken, bone and all. So, uh, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. And, uh, sorry, my hat's all messed up. Had to take my glove off. Adjust my camera here. Woo! So far, I'm impressed. That was pretty cool. Uh, I was... I mean, I knew the bone and everything was in there. Uh I didn't think it would really be a problem. I thought it was going to more break the bone, but it almost just cut through the bone. So that's that's wicked. Now, if it was like a full-size like cow bone, probably wouldn't do that, but it'd probably definitely crack it or break it. But I could be wrong. Anyway, just a little quick demonstration. If you had to um, slice and dice a chicken in the kitchen, the TKL Striker is able to do that. So stand by. We'll be back with the rest of the video as soon as I get this stuff cleaned up. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, got everything kind of cleaned up. Got my area set up here to do the uh, rest of this video. And uh, thanks for sticking with me here. Uh, I know it's probably a quick cut on the video. But um, again, if you didn't see my video earlier, uh, my previous unboxing video, you know, I kind of went over the sheath. Uh, very, very nice, well-made sheath. Has a nice, I think it's a one and a half inch uh, belt clip. Uh, what's really cool is with TKL is you can customize your orders to a certain degree. Um, you can 
get a 1.5 inch belt clip or you can get a 1.75 inch or um, he has a few other various options you can choose for clips so that's cool you can choose your clip style that you like uh, tons of handle scale colors to choose from um, what's cool is the handle scales really even aren't that expensive so like i have the od green ones on this striker uh, let's say i want the marauder set i can order i think they're like 20 or 30 bucks i can order them come here easily swap these out i mean so it's kind of cool because like down the road if you want to change up the handle color it's going to be really easy to do so switch them back and forth if you want to you know gucci out your your blade if you will um but tons of really cool color combinations that he has for handle scales uh, and so that's really cool that you get to choose that you know um here at the end i will flip the camera around one more time give you guys an uh, another up close look at the blade um, as well as the size comparison with the Raider and the outer limitless accomplice as well. Um, but hey, let's get into this, guys, right? You guys don't want to sit here and watch me all day. So here we go. I know I do this a lot, but this is the, you know, my my stab book, if you will. You know, this catalog is uh, about three quarters of an inch thick. Let's get in it. Yep, went went through the tips just coming out the, the end here. Let's check this tip out here. Good. No problem this down flat bam piercing right just through the tip there let's go one more time reverse grip yep tips just right there so the tips going through let's check out this tip make sure there's no down oh, still needle point sharp do a couple little slashes on this one i mean I mean, those are just light slashes, and look at that. I mean, you guys seen what it did to the chicken. That's ridiculous. Um, the poly rope, you guys know, this stuff is pretty tough. Pain in the ass to cut. Makes a mess. But, you know, I like you guys, so I mean, try not to cut my leg here. Bam. So you got your standard leak, the poly rope there. Cutting right through it, no problem. Easy peasy. Nice. Got a belt here. Leather belt. Standard. Oh, this was an Ariat belt, I think it was, but it got, I stretched it out with my big old gut, but you got to cut a, cut a belt off or something like that to make a tourniquet. If you make shift tourniquet, you cut slices off if you need to. Uh, come in here. You take the tip, put it in the, there. Do like a little drag cut. You can split it right down the middle, no problem. Or if you had to flip it over, let's say you had to slide the knife up underneath the belt, cut it off, you know, emergency situation for whatever reason. Let's see if I can do this. I don't have a whole lot to hold on to here, so let's do this. Use this piece. I don't even know where. Yeah, there you go. Cut off of there before. Bam, slice the belt right off. Clean cut, no problem. So. We know it could do that. If you had to go in and pierce some jean like material or something like that and, you know, shred it up, no problem. I mean, this tip just goes right through. I mean, it's got a nice, a cute tip, man. And it's just, and with this swedge, it's just, it's a piercer. You know what I mean? Uh, right there, nice, nice, easy cuts. I mean, a lot of this stuff is, we, we know it's, for a nice sharp blade, it's not going to really be too difficult to do. But if you had to come in here and cut some of this hose off, it's no problem. And with what I like about this blade is it's got a little bit more length than the Raider. I really love the Raider, too. That, don't get me wrong. That's a, that, they're both fantastic blades. Um, this is... A, I, really, I, I just really like this blade shape. Um, what I like about it is after talking to like Adam Boyce of uh, Spartan o Tactical and like what he looks for in self-defense blades. Um, I have an interview about that too. Go check that video out. But, you know, he likes to look for blades that have more of a straight edge, almost like a Warncliffe style blade. Um, because if it has a lot of belly when you're slashing that you tend to lose some of the force towards the belly. Well, with this blade, it does have some belly to it, but it's slight. It's not... It's not an overpronounced belly, if you will. So I felt like when I'm slashing with it, I'm able to drive that tip down through the cut. And I think that was evident when I hit that leg bone and I cut through that joint that I showed you guys where it started to cut through that joint. 
that was the tip that was going through that joint. So I, you know, as I'm doing that slash that I'm able to get that tip all the way through and rather than lose some of the power of it sliding out with like, say more of a belly blade. Right. So I could be talking out of my ass. I'm not an expert. That's just my somewhat educated guess from talking to people. So <laughs> don't quote me on that, you know, but I think I'm okay on that one. But, uh, I mean, obviously cutting through hose is not going to be a problem. Um, you had to come in and make, uh, your feather sticks. You can, I mean, you got this nice flat spot here, so you can easily rest your thumb on this back spine, which is smooth. There's no jimping. And you can just come in here and slide in and make your feather sticks. No problem. Again, I'm not a feather stick making expert. I'm no bushcraft ex expert. Can I start a fire? Yep. Is it pretty? Probably not. Do I care? No, as long as I'm warm. It don't matter to me, right? But there it is. You can do feather sticks. Let's uh, say you wanted to come in here and uh, had to cut this feather stick off, right? But you need a clean cut. Now, guys, when I do this, if you've seen me do this before, a lot of times the wood dowel here splits in half, so it is what it is. But I'm going to show that even though this has a swedge on the spine, it's still strong. I mean, you're not going to damage the... There you go. So, I mean... Pretty clean cut there, guys, on that. I mean, yeah, it kind of broke off right towards the end there, this piece, but it still left a nice clean cut. Um, I would definitely say with a shorter handle, though, if you're up close on something, if you have a ledge you can hang the back of your hand off of, I would do that because if you're here, by the time you get to the bottom of that you're hitting, you're going to be probably hitting your knuckles because it is a shorter handle. Let's not mince words about this, guys, and Mr. Tim Kell doesn't either. His knives are not really made for bushcrafting and things like that. They're made for EDC carry self-defense situations, okay? So, theoretically, this knife isn't designed to be out here doing this type of bushcrafty type stuff, if you will. Um, and so, yeah, it, are you going to hit your knuckles if you're batoning? Yeah. Is this a last resort type of tool for that? Yes. So, keep that in mind. This is carrying around town, uh, opening boxes, uh, uh, cutting up your chicken for dinner, so to speak, you know what I mean? Uh, stuff like that. Okay. So keep that in mind. But if you did have to do this out in the woods, you know, definitely come off a log or something and have the back end of the handle. So that way you're not smashing your knuckles into the, um, whatever it is, the ground or whatever it is you're cutting on. Right. Um, here we have a larger wood dowel. This one's pine. Um, let's, you know, I'm going to come off the end here. So like, again, I don't cut my, not cut my hand, but smash my hand, but I can get my wood dowel to cooperate with me. So we're going to hold that right there. Bam, there it goes. Now, one of the other things I like, the reason why I like doing this is, um, one, it shows you can do it, right? So there's a clit a cut again as it got towards the end of the wood dowel like always it, they kind of split you know but what's you know that's all right because you know then you, if you needed to you can come in and split this down even more you know to make some even better kindling for your for your fire or whatever right but i like to do this because it, it also puts a lot of um stress on the edge you know what i mean and looking at this edge <laughs> there's nothing wrong with it i mean it's still it's still sharp. There's no glinting or rolling. And I mean, that's a big testament to the heat treating, excuse me, that um, Tim Kell does. He has a pretty intricate, I mean, he really concentrates a lot on the heat treat and, every, and the tempering and things like that, which makes his blades very strong. And uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, I'm pretty sure I did, but this model I got an ADCRV too. And again, we, let's go back to the customizations type stuff. You can, I think these were available to order in AEBL as well. Um, so he, he does offer different knife stills too. So that's pretty cool when you order the blade, <coughs> excuse me, extension cord. I don't know if you're at the work site, something, you know, you have to <coughs> extension cord got wrapped around Billy Joe's foot and he's trapped. You got to cut it loose, right? So you're going to come in here and just bang right through it. So you can see that, but that's a pretty damn clean cut through three copper wires with multiple layers of plastic sheathing. So, is this a chopper? No, there's not a lot of weight to this. And with the smaller handle, 
even though it feels like a full size grip, it is a smaller handle. If I had to choke back on it to about here, let's see if we can do like a little chop. So I could do I could do a chop. It's not there. Got that one off clean. See, if you had to, you could come in and do little chops, but it's not a chopper. Again, this is a EDC self defense style blade. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. You're not going to be out there whacking away, chopping trees down with this, guys. Um, this is probably about the extent I would attempt to baton with this blade. Uh, not because of the, I'm, I'm afraid it's going to bend or break. It's more, there's not a lot. If you got a blade, a log that's bigger than this, you're not going to be able to baton through it because there's not a lot, a ton of handle for you to hold on to to hit, I guess, if that makes sense. So you definitely want to stick to, if you had a baton, you would want to definitely stick with smaller pieces of wood or also, as I'm hitting this, if you notice, I'm hitting down here towards the tip, so I'm testing the tip strength as well. And I learned that from my good old friend Scab over at Choir Boys Cutlery. And if you don't follow him, you should, because he's got some badass videos too. But, you know, you're testing the tip, durability. I think I ran right up into a knot right here. Check that out. Yep. This is another trick I saw somebody. So, like, you, let's say you do run into a knot. You can put your blade like so. Let's see. Let's put this through here like that. Get it a little bit deeper. You can rest the blade on top of your stump or log, and you can hit the wood as well. And it acts like a, like a, I don't know what it acts like, <laughs> but it helps. I think it generates a little bit more force through the through the wood. Jeez. Well, that was cool. So as I was hammering that down, the back end of the switch actually started to dig down through the stump that I'm using. So I was actually batoning two pieces of wood at once. Believe it or not, that's kind of weird. All right, there we go. So is this the easiest knife to baton with? No. It's not designed for that. I'll say that a million times. EDC self-defense. But I do like to kind of demonstrate some of that stuff just to show you how tough the knife is, how it'll hold and how the edge will hold up. Looking at the spine here, there's no there's nothing wrong with the spine. The blade's straight. Handle, everything's on there solid. So I mean it's it, that's what it is, guys. It's 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 a tough little EDC self-defense blade. And uh, I think carrying this around as that tool, um, I don't think you can go wrong. Especially, you know, when it comes time to make dinner and you got to cut up that chicken, um, you're going to be able to handle that pretty easily. And I can tell you, I would not want to be that chicken on the other side of the striker because the thing is, make some wicked cuts, man. I'm telling you. Um, very, it's got a nice weight to it with this. The, the ergonomic grip on this, the way I can, with my XL hands, um, I wear XL mechanics gloves, right? So to give you a size reference, feeling like I have a full size grip on this knife, I, I feel secure and confident in holding it. And if I was having to come in and chop my way through some spider webs, you know, I could do that. If I had to reverse grip it and come in and do some, uh, poke some holes in a inflatable inner tube that's keeping me underwater, I could do that, you know. <clears throat> something to, you know, things to that effect. Um, the way the sheath carries, it's, it's very minimal, discreet. Um, it's just, a, it's just this, the Raider, um, the accomplice, which is a little bigger. I mean, guys, these TKL blades are great for EDC self-defense carry. So, um, again, let me pause the video, flip the camera around real quick. I want to give you guys again, one last top down look at the blade. Uh, again, next to the Raider and even the, the TKL Accomplice, which is a little bit bigger blade and a little bit bigger handle. But, you know, I'd like to give you guys some sort of size references. So uh, stand by real quick. Let me pause this and we'll get back to it. Alrighty, guys, here we are back again. Here's a close up look at this. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not 
really able to show you guys this, but with this nickel boron coating, right? So you see these marks right here. This is from the almond wood. And every time I baton through almond wood, it leaves these mark like these. It's almost like a, it's like stuck on there. I don't even know what it is, but it's wood material, uh, matter, if you will, right? This stuff, when I go in the house, I'll be able to take, because of this nickel boron coating, I'll be able to take a wash rag and some Dawn dish soap, and that'll pretty much come right off. A lot of the other blades I have that don't have a nickel boron coating, I have to kind of scrub that off with triple out wool, or it'll just kind of stain the blade there. So, but when I was doing my Raider video, I had some of the same marks on my blade, wiped right off with uh, soap and water. So it was pretty, so this nickel boron coating is really good. Um, I'm not really, even though this is ADC or V2, I'm not really worried about these blades getting wet because the corrosion resistance that that boron coating is giving these blades. Um, do I, will I still dry it as soon as I can? Yes, but I think you can. These blades can get wet and stay wet for longer <coughs> with that boron coating. So that's a good. That's a that's a nice thing to know. Um, so here, again, here's the sheath. Again, you get different holes here, options to be able to mount different uh, tech lock, if you will. Like on this one, on this Raider, I actually mounted a tech lock. Uh, because I attach this to a 511 gun fanny pack. Um, so you can mount, you know, tech lock on there if you need to. Um, show you guys. Nice, solid, positive click. No rattle. I mean, it's just got this thumb ramp here. Pops right out. So we'll set that to the side and we get this reader out. So I can get you that size comparison. So as you can see, the reader and the striker have the same handle dimensions, same handle grip panels. Uh, but you're just getting a little bit longer, pointier, narrower blade with the with the Raider. <clears throat> if you come in with the TKL Accomplice, you're getting. It may not look like it, but this handle is is just a little bit longer. As you can see right through here, you're getting just a little bit, about a, maybe a half inch more handle with the Accomplice. You're definitely getting a wider blade. But your length is almost the same. You're just, the striker's just a tad bit short. Maybe put the Raider on top. You can kind of see there the size differences. So you got a skinny, narrow, slicey blade, a wider slicing. I mean, they're all slicers, but I mean, you can see the size differences there. So I just like to pop those in there and give you guys an idea um, of what those look like. <clears throat> I don't know when the outer. Limitless Accomplice is not available. I believe there are still some Raiders available on his website if you're interested in ordering one of those. And there might even still be some Strikers left. I pre-ordered this, and, and so I got it in. Um, he might have a few left. It, it definitely email him. Uh, utilize the link. Go online see if it's available still. Um, or email Tim Kell and uh, his wife and see, you know, Maybe somebody backed out of their pre-order or something like that. So you might be able to still get one of these. But uh, I would definitely jump on getting getting one of these TKL blades because they're fantastic. Um, American made. Um, <clears throat> I mean, Tim Kell, owner, designer. I mean, he his hands go on every one of these blades that he's making. I mean, he's doing the sharpening on all of these by hand. Um He's got his own little system for that. I mean, he's very, very meticulous with the with the blades. I mean, if there's like the slightest little thing that he sees that he doesn't like, something we may not even notice, he, he won't even send it out. It'll be a blemish on, uh, he'll call it a blemish model, um, you know. And <clears throat> So he's very meticulous. So when you're getting one of these blades, you're definitely getting a quality American-made, 100% American-made, veteran-made blade. Um, with a lot of attention detail. I mean, there's hands on with this blade through pretty much almost the entire process. I mean, he's doing these grenades. He calls his grenade grip scallops. He's doing those himself. I mean, so, I mean, you're getting a very high quality American made blade with a lot of hands on quality, uh, qualities to it as well. So, so, you know, when you're buying one of those, anyway, I will have links to his Facebook, his Instagram, um, as well as a link to, that will take you to his website. It's an affiliate link uh, for my Straight Edge channel. And if you go through that affiliate link, I'd greatly appreciate it because it helps my channel out. But it also gives you access. I mean, well, you're going to have access to the website regardless. If you use my affiliate link or if you don't, I don't care. Um, it'd be nice if you do. But if you don't, that's fine. 
I just want you to be able to get a T-Kill blade and enjoy it as much as I do. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Stay safe. Stay sharp. Please hit like, subscribe, and share, and we will see you next time.